everyone, it's Mark Sargent, and this is Flat Earth Q&A Emails 24. So let's get right to it. First email is from Kimberly. She says, Hi Mark, we spoke this AM from Seattle. Listen to your interview with the 32nd degree Mason. A few questions. How do we know ancient religions don't play a part in spirituality? I'm obviously now questioning everything I've ever been taught. Raised Christian, so how would God, Jesus, aliens all jive together? Well, I don't think there'd be a real problem, in, in my opinion, because I don't necessarily believe in aliens like uh, ships coming from Mars and Jupiter and Venus. I believe that they are part, part of older civilizations, older versions of us, which means they are still bound to the religions at hand, just slightly different versions of them. I don't, I don't really want to get into dissecting the religions too much. You know, there's five major ones that control most of the population of this world, and I mean 80% of them, and those five religions are Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam and Christianity. Two, you mentioned at the end about the dancing sun. Who or what is controlling the sun, moon, and stars? That would be the creators of this place. Whoever, whatever advanced civilization or divine power did it. So they are controlling everything in the sky, along with everything below. The uh, atmospheric conditions, the underwater conveyor system, the jet stream, the magma system. It's all controlled by them. She goes on to say, my biggest search now is religion, what's out there, and how do I find the truth versus falling for a lie? Hasn't religion been used to manipulate people? I'm not sure. Have a fantastic night and or day. Kimberly Valdez, she's the queen of cleaning, residential and commercial cleaning. And yeah, as far as falling for the truth, that's actually, I just mixed that. Falling for the truth, that's a, that's a t-shirt right there everybody's got has to come to it via their own path and hopefully the flat earth in this case will help you so thank you this next one is called earth clues hello mark my name is jake jones and i was finally able to finish watching your 12 part true as the sun rises and sets video on our flat earth i just want to say thank you for that i've been a flat earther for about one year now and you and I were able to finally convince my girlfriend, Amy. It was part when you proved the planes, GPS, that did it. Oh, planes as an airplanes, GPS. He spelled it wrong. Amy has that app on her phone and mine, in case she ever left her phone at home. She could access it on my phone. Also, I just want to say that I could never get anyone to be open-minded about the simple fact that looking at the sky when the moon is out in the day. One should be able to see black space past it and how the moon looks like it is poking its head through the firmament, sort of like bobbing for apples. One more thing is I recently took a Amtrak train ride from Reno, Nevada to Sioux City, Iowa to see my sister who I hadn't seen for 15 years. The train never got over 45 miles an hour and 15 miles an hour through Colorado. Long, nerving, and uncomfortable. If it had gone any faster, you know how trains don't have to stop at railroad crossings. It could have been there in 8 to 12 hours. Instead, it took two full days to reach my destination. Your videos brought that to mind, mind or eye trick, or is New York a stone's throw away from Nevada? Anyway, Mark. I will do what I can to wake up the well-rounded population who act like zombies these days. Fellow Flat Earther, Jake Jones. Thank you, Jake. Moving on. This one's called the Bradley J Program. Mark, that was an excellent interview on the Bradley J Program. David. Thank you, David. And if you guys want to listen to that in its entirety, it is called the, I think it's the 98th Flat Earth Clues Interview 98. 10.30 a.m. radio out of Boston, Massachusetts, United States, with Jay Bradley. It was, a, it was a fun interview, even though I still, to this day, do not know what he was doing. He's never done a conspiracy interview in his life, and the first one he does is Flat Earth. Whoa, that was way out there, way out of his wheelhouse. This one's from, I have no idea, no name. 
but it's called Alex Jones. I think if someone can convince Alex of the flat earth, the information would spread like wildfire. Plus, he has Donald Trump's ear. Just think what that could do. And yeah, you're absolutely right. As a matter of fact, Alex Jones, one of his producers, contacted me last year, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, early last year. And they were, they were thinking of doing a show with Flat Earth and, and talking to me in the whole nine yards. But they couldn't figure out how to do the show without making it come off really, they, their words, ridiculous. Because eventually they have to say the words Flat Earth. In fact, they were wondering how they could title or, or run the show without using the words Flat Earth. And I told them, you get about 10 minutes before eventually you're going to have to say it. They said, we can't. We can't say the words. Because if we do, you know, there's a chance there could be a huge backlash. Don't blame them. I mean, Alex Jones is already considered pretty fringe as it is. You, you're going to go and, and tell his subscribers that he's now in a flat earth. Ooh, that's, I mean, the mainstream would even come after him then. This next email is from Nick Theodore. Hi, Mark. I just had an idea for another proof of the flat earth. Probably been done before, but I cannot find it. Here it is. One, calculate the ratio of the areas of the small and large loop of the solar analemma. A-N-A-L-E-M-M-A. -M -M -A. Don't know that word. Two, do the same for the two tropical circles on the AE flat earth map. Three, if the ratios are similar, then this is another indication that the flat earth map is fairly accurate and the sun spirals yearly around the flat disk earth between the tropics. Also, we are told that the eccentricity of the Earth orbit is less than 0 0.02 or nearly a perfect circle. If this were true, the loops of the analemma should be nearly the same. They are certainly not. The small loop shows that the sun moves much slower and seems to cover less ground than when it travels the large loop. Globe busted yet again, I reckon. Love your work and your show. Cheers, Nick Theodore. Thank you, Nick. That's awesome. This one's called... In fact, there's no title to it. It's just a link to a YouTube video. Hello, sir. I saw your YouTube video from above. Oh, he actually pasted my, one of my YouTube videos into the, the topic. I don't have YouTube links memorized, but thank you. Uh, from above a few months ago and wanted it to send it to other friends. But had to discover that it is not on YouTube anymore. Do you know where I can find it? Please because the 10 arguments were very clear, clearly and nicely exposed. If you ha also have some Christian arguments for the flat earth truth, thank you very kindly. Cornelius from Vienna, Austria. And yeah, so he, he obviously had, it was a mirror, whatever it was, wherever that link went. So I sent him the link to my main YouTube channel, which is Mark K. Sargent. Also, you can just go in any browser, type in Flat Earth Clues. And as far as all the Christian references, Christian arguments, there's two people right now, there's like four or five. I mean, I'm not going to discount Robbie Davidson or uh, Controversy 7. But at the same time, the, the, the main ones, the main two I try to recommend are Rob Skiba and his website, testingtheglobe.com, if you're a strong Christian, or go to True Frequency Radio and check out Zen Garcia. Between those two guys, that's a, that's a great foundation work from. This next one's called Dome Proof. <clears throat> Please only use my first name, Jim. Thanks. Mark, how are you? Are you aware of this from a whistleblower in the aerospace satellite industry? Different sorts of radio waves are reflected from the solid dome covering the earth because of its unique properties likened to transparent aluminum once seen on Star Trek. This mimics satellite transmissions, although GPS is no doubt still mostly ground-based would be excellent if you could somehow get the fellow in question on one of your shows. He says that men in black are hunting him and even tried to blow him up. Hmm. However, massive public exposure would keep him safer than a concealed carry Beretta storm. I'd say, eh? Cheers, Jim. Yeah, any subject matter experts, I'm not going to rattle them off because uh, there's too many at this point. Any subject matter experts, people in the professional sector, I don't care what it, if you're engineering, if you're aerospace, if you're military, if anything to do with, with planes or shipping, you want to talk to me, you got something to say, I can keep you anonymous. Check my other shows. I haven't given names out to, to quite a few of my shows. Some people have gone public, though. Contact me at either msergeant23 at comcast.net or just call the, the 
either one phone number, let's use the show line, 720-897-6111, and leave a message, and I'll get to you. And if you don't memorize either of those things, both email and phone number are on every single video that I make, at the very least in the description, and sometimes actually embedded in the video. This next one's called... What is this next one called? This next one's called Awesome Interview. I like those. Be nice. Just hear the just heard the 10:30 a.m. Jay talking interview. You knocked it out of the park, bro. That was great. Ciao, Al. Thank you, Al. Again, if you guys like my interviews, I always like getting pats on the back because some of them are not easy to do. And I don't know. I I generally don't know what they're gonna come at me with when when I do an interview. And I've done I've done over a hundred, but I've only posted 99. Because some of the interviews I've had, I couldn't actually get the recording from it for whatever reason. They, they wouldn't give me access to the archive. And Oh, by the way, if anyone wants to listen to the Coast to Coast interview, and it's not on YouTube, you know, I, I can't repost it, uh, but I, I have it lying around here somewhere. Uh, if anyone wants it, you can just email me and say, just put in the title, you know, Coast to Coast interview. And I'll send it to you. It's pretty big, so I'll send it to you probably through WeTransfer because most email systems are capped at about 25 meg, and I think this is like 70 or 80 meg. It's not that big, but you have to use WeTransfer to do it. So maybe once wants the Coast to Coast interview. I'm going to be giving it out of the convention on Flash Tribes, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, as part of the press kit. But if you want to listen to it before then, just email me and say, hey, Mark, really like to listen to that interview, and I will, I will shoot it off to you. But make sure I get your email address to do it. Uh, let's see, this next one's called Telephone Number. <clears throat> it's from Rob. Mark, could you send me your number, please? Tried calling, but I got an invalid number from the one I've got. That's from Rob. So I'm going to shoot him a thing and say uh, 30. No, let's do the show number because they both go to the same thing, anyway. 720 Thanks. Seven two zero eight nine seven six one one one, and that's the also the show number. But if it's not show night on Tuesday, it just goes to voicemail. I sometimes I'll pick up an international call, and if I'm not literally not doing anything in the moment, sometimes I'll pick up a normal call. But bear with me because I get a lot of calls, a lot of emails. This one's called Flat Earth North. Hello, Mark. I am Bruce from Perth in Western Australia. I don't see how the globe can hold up too much longer. Maybe it's all part of a new world order thing to change the globe into a flat earth through a nuclear war. Ha ha ha. I have been fascinated with yours and Rob Skiba's research and have had my doubts about a global earth. The narrative doesn't line up with the Bible either. I was in the Australian Navy for nine years and the horizons definitely didn't curve, nor did anything disappear over the horizon. Just out of sight with distance, the sun appeared to circle. Anyway, I wondered about the position of the north. On a flat earth, is north now the center of the earth, and then true north is now north of the center of the earth, and the northern edge of the circle of the earth? Whoa, that's a long one. Yeah, the, 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 there is no north. There is no north, south, east, or west. No, the magnetic north would be the center of the map, would be the center of the UN flag, the AE map. What makes the compass like a magnet always pull to the north? The magnetism. It, there's there's so obviously a magnetic pull at the center of this thing, which would make sense. If you want to simulate a sphere, that's that's an easy way to do it. You just But what's interesting is what they don't talk about is what is magnetic south. How When's the last time you heard about that, magnetic south? Because I had an Australian intelligence guy say, that from everything he's seen, there is no magnetic south. Because eventually you'd think pretty quickly after you cross the equator, the needle would flip south and would dominate. But the north is, seems to always dominate. Anyway, uh, let's see. Do the electromagnetic poles center around the center of the Earth position, etc.? What thoughts have you had about this? Did they confiscate all the ancient maps, sea charts, etc. as 2,000 years ago or so? Yeah, yeah, all the old maps are gone. Romans ruled the sea with shipping, and the Ch Chaldeans had a mass of ships. Even the Egyptians were well known to traverse the seas, I'm sure. I'm trying to find all this stuff, but nothing so far except the usual historical narrative. Thanks, Bruce Gray. Uh, yeah, 
you know, it's tough to find. You know, the true information has been buried for quite a while now, and they've been well, they've been hiding it for the better part of sixty years. Well, and that's just that's just the shape of the Earth. The everything else, the old maps that have been hidden for centuries. This one's called Greetings and License Plains from Idaho. You guys probably already seen the Idaho thing. Hey, Mark, thanks for the mention on your show. I am teaching hunters education this week at night. So I had to watch the show yesterday. Sorry you had so many gremlins in the wires. Yeah, I know. Well, that wasn't actually gremlins in the wires. Uh, TFR has to reboot the, the phone server that I, that I use. So it, it, without that rebooting, there's a chance that people can't call in. What happens is when I try to add them to group call on this side, it won't let me do it. But it, I think we've got that solved now. We're just having to reboot the server. It takes literally 30 seconds. Boom, we're back up. So a while back, I remembered seeing the ISS track map and started me wondering. So I went to their site and captured this screen. And this is on isstracker.com. So if this thing is falling around the Earth at 17 and a half thousand miles an hour at a height of 250 miles, how on Earth does it follow a sine wave trajectory and move thousands of miles laterally in one direction and then reverse direction to travel thousands of miles laterally again over and over. The path does not describe a great circle. It would have to be steered on this course. They never mentioned these course corrections. And given the supposed speed, imagine trying to do a join up with it as it approaches the top of the wave and reverses direction. I really think that our education system has trained us to never look deeply or think critically. Just accept the images as they flash in front of you. We just look at this graphic and think, wow, cool. Stay flat, brother Greg. And yeah, Greg, wonderful that you, you saw this. And also wonderful that you got a It's Flat license plate for Idaho. Awesome. Anyone that does a, a, a special license plate, I don't care what it is. If it's no curve, no globe, it's flat, it is flat, flat earth, abbreviate anything you want. And remember, the United States and Canada, you either get six, seven, or eight letters, depending on the population. So... Do what you can. Be creative. And if you send me a picture, a screenshot of your of your plate, even before you get it, I will check out the. Uh, I, I will put it in the slideshow, and I will put it. Uh, use that as a thumbnail. I will use it all the time. You'll see this thing all the time. You'll get your money's worth. This one's called Flat Earth Truth. Hey, so I'm new to Flat Earth Truth. It all started with something within me pulling me towards researching this topic more and more. Little by little, I watched videos of Eric Dubé, Rob Skiba, and you. I res refuse to accept this truth without 100% certainty. I can safely say I'm 100% sure. Now the problem for me is spreading this truth. I'm often laughed at or mocked. What can I do to spread this truth? Do it slowly. Do it carefully. Don't come at people straight on. I don't care how enthusiastic you are. You've got to size up your opponent. The first rule of flat club is that you do not talk about flat club, meaning you look at the person, you you find out either through, through previous knowledge or you just start asking little questions. Come at them sideways. See if they're open to any conspiracies at all. If they're not open to any conspiracies, do not hit them with flat earth. If they've looked into 9-11, looked into others, that's even no guarantee. Just put the seed in their head. Just put it out there. You know, how do you know it's a globe? Or if you're really nervous about it, say, hey, I saw this crazy stuff on YouTube about these flat earth idiots. What do you think? And if they say, oh, flat earth is a piece of crap. I'd never look at it. If anyone looks at it, they should be shot. Eh, I wouldn't follow up. So, but thank you. This one is called Flat Earth Resource Website. Good day, Mark. If you want or need a Christian website for the Flat Earth Resources, I put one together. And I will give it to you right here. It is Veritas, V-E-R-I-T-A-S-M-C, M as in Mark, C as in Charlie, dot org, slash Flat Earth HTML is the direct URL. Good idea you had of connecting people in the community in Strange World 89. Hope you keep that up. Have a nice day, Luke. You know what? Someone who wants to contact Luke and ask him about this website, I'm going to give out his email as well. His email is answers at liferesearchuniversal.com. Answers at liferesearchuniversal.com. He's got a Christian website for Flat Earth Resources. Excellent. This one's called Truth or What? Sir, I would like to know, is the Earth really flat or is it just another conspiracy or something to distract us from the bigger reality? ND, if it's truth? 
I don't text a lot, so I don't know what that means. No, ND. But what about the planet X and its course towards Earth? No, planet X is not going anywhere. It's it's going to be. If it is, it's going to be a light show in the sky. And what about the other theories about space and the universe and everything else? There is no space. There is no universe, not as far as you know it. And the main reason is this. If you are faking space, if the, if the planetarium is faking space, you don't have to actually have real space outside of it. It's a huge waste of resources. Not saying that God is lazy. I'm just saying that if people fall for the illusion, if people believe in the illusion, that's what you go with. What's on the outside of this thing? <sighs> Anybody's guess. Could be an unlimited dim dimension. Could be Nirvana, Shambhala, Heaven, whatever you want to call it. But it is definitely not light years and light years and light years worth of nothing. Thank you, though. This one's from... Who's this from? Don't know who this is from. Sent you a file. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, that was from something else. I was sending an interview to some guy. Sorry about that. This one's called Brooks Agnew Disinformation. How did I miss this? Hope you are well. I'm friends with Poncho Pete and keenly follow you and others in the Flat Earth community. Just a quick one about Brooks Agnew and his contradictions believing he can measure curvature. I didn't know he was looking into it. I heard a recent show with him about Antarctica, so it perked my attention. Yet after listening to his claims, they sound very false and wondered if you've ever listened to this guy's story before. He is a hollow earth proponent, but is talking about a 2017 mission to the North Pole on a Russian icebreaker to find the hidden entrance. That sounds familiar. He suggests to be certain that they are heading correctly inside the earth. It can be done measuring the curvature using a gyroscope from the ship. Does this guy know something we all don't? No, he's not going anywhere. I thought gyroscopes had given more proof towards the flat earth. They, they are. And this is regards Simon. And his YouTube channel is called Lead Rules, L-E-E-D-S-R-U-L-Z. No, no, this guy, Brooks Agnew, no. And I, I shouldn't poke fun of him too much because he is on the TFR network. But he's not, he, he, hollow earth proponent, that's just the, the tip of the iceberg. No play on words there. That's how I started out. Eventually, if he's in hollow earth, eventually he's going to get into flat earth. He is not going to the North Pole on a Russian icebreaker this year. I can guarantee it. And, and if he, no. It isn't happening. Remember what happened to the last guy that tried to do a Russian icebreaker to the North Pole to find the, the entrance. He died of cancer really quickly for no apparent reason. Oh, let's see. The next one is called Mars Question. Howdy, Mark. Uh, this one's... Eh, let's, let's read it. It's long, but why not? Howdy, Mark. Always enjoy your interviews and videos, etc. Been addicted to... Flat Earth for over a year now, and before I get to the point of the no this note, I just want to say they made way too much of that fun video with you, Sasha, and what's her name after the FE party. Good grief, lighten up. It was nothing but friends having fun. Two, I got a bone to pick with these guys, Terman and Sly Sparkling and a handful of others that I can't think of right now. Three, love Patricia and will never understand why many are so mean to her, but you probably have the same list of naysayers. Four, still like some of what Antonio posts and he still makes me laugh quite a bit. I'm not gonna number anymore after this. That GED skeptic is one honorary cuss. <laughs> that LSC is one talented graphics guy, but hardly the Lord. Hmm, good one. What's up with people thinking half the good folk in this movement are shills? Quasi-luminous drives me crazy and although I know Patricia gives people equal time, I still can't imagine her stooping to putting him on her show that ever happened but it sounded like it was going to math powerland well he's a bit fast for me eric dubay eric dubay love a lot of what he's done and he eloquently puts a lot of things but too bad he's got a drag in the new age voodoo into it and let's face it he was early on but has no right to take all the credit for flat earth like he prides himself in he also seems to have an ongoing distrust of trustable flat earthers in my humble opinion I get the feeling he's jealous of anyone else with high views and subscriptions. Hmm. Love your growing Flat Earth license plate collection. In 1997, I began the push to restore the classic Highway 101 shield signs to highways here in the West Coast and was then designated as a historic route. I'm currently awaiting our new embossed metal sign replacements. Your professional interviews with military personnel, personnel etc. are so impressive. Your brown blanket on the bed looks like the one I bought at Costco. That's probably because it was bought at Costco. Okay, that's my wine talking now. 
I feel a little orphan reddish tonight. Nice. A little bad news long before Flat Earth, but uh, our cosmology long but our cosmology is all making more sense to me now especially when scripture says the sun moon and stars were made on the fourth day why can't kent hoven see that not that he's the best but me a conspiracy nut no but it did take a huge kick in the head when authorities arrested my sister for murder back in 1995 when me and my family were alibi witnesses for her and the day in question i wonder if i should be reading this no oh, let's read it heck yet we were tiddly tidily never called to testify uh, complaint hit stone walls and Cherry Dale ended up being convicted of a murder she had absolutely nothing to do with. So just bringing that up as a drastic example of, of how, yes, authorities lie sometimes to achieve their goals and promotions. My family and I never could have believed such a thing was possible in this day and age, but it turned our world upside down for 21 years and has only recently been lightened with Cherry's parole uh, on exemplar, exemplary behavior. Well, good. All right. Uh, what's that got to do with flat earth just that we live in one wicked world of very powerful liars and witch hunters and yes there are conspiracies about and here's my prudish side i can't share flat earth videos laced with vulgar language which is so prevalent today if some of those folks would just drop a few words and phrases it would add so much more credibility and views to them i would think it's just rude to, po to post vulgar language okay i just said that for a cheap laugh but it's true, at least because I, I edited out her uh, her profanity. But it's true and probably the only time a sentence merited the term. Ha, did I mention I'm not perfect? I would love to start making Flat Earth videos as I have few rabbits in the hat I haven't seen yet. That's probably a bad term as those would equal tricks. So I'll change the description to simply gems. And yes, my closest friends think I'm nuts for considering the Earth may be flat. I just got a grin. There's a time for everything. And speaking of Orphan Red... <laughs> How's that a segue? She is one enchanting chick and smart. She surprised me several times with new ideas I'd never thought of. Triangulating the distance of the sun from a flat plane is my favorite, though. I think you're going to like my video on inertia. Just saying. Okay, now that I got all the things I want to share with you, I'll get to the unrelated point of this email. I was looking into fake pics from Mars tonight. I remember seeing a few shots of the Mars rover where it was by all its lonesome without a selfie stick. How the hell is that possible? But then after looking at an abundance of pics, it occurred to me that aren't they interested in taking any pictures of the sky at night? Good point. Why isn't the Mars rover taking pictures of the sky at night? Looking for procession? I guess not. Saw one brief shot of the Earth and the moon. You know, that's great. That's a wonderful point. Why doesn't the Mars rover turn its camera up at night? Saw one brief shot of the Earth and our moon setting, but that's Earth. That's it. I remember hearing the camera they sent to Mars was only two megapixel. That's all we need was their excuse. Uh, what a farce. Hope this note finds you well, Mark. Congratulations on all your videos. I'm very impressed. Your voice reminds me of Rod Serling because I never heard that before. So those are the things I'd say if I wrote Mark Sargent about the Flat Earth. Doubt if you'll have time to read them, but there they are in the virtual realm nonetheless. You behave, Fred. And, well, Fred's going to have a big surprise because I'm going to send him an email after this and say, oh, by the way, I just read this on the Q&A thing. This one is called Mark. Bulgaria must be flat, too. Bonjour, Mark. Regarding your cryptic prediction in Strange World 91, if there's something big coming up, I'm in. Cheers, Bill. And what he's talking about is what I was talking about was the Flat Earth 2017 International Conference in Raleigh, North Carolina, this year, November 9th and 10th. Re you know, get your tickets now and, and you know stay for the weekend if you can. I'm going to be there at least Wednesday through Saturday. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Every, I'm not, not going to read off that. If you, want, if you want more information on the conference, if you haven't heard about it by now, go and email... Well, you know, don't even email them. Just go to the website, the main website, which is fe2017.com. This next one is called Questions Regarding Flat Earth Video. Hello, my name is Rick, and I watched a two-hour video of yours on YouTube. Though not sure if it's from your actual channel, I am interested in many different conspiracy theories, and it prompted me to have a few questions I'd like to get your opinion on. First... In this theory, Antarctica is an outside perimeter of a flat Earth, so there is technically no South Pole then. True. 
Does this mean that the trip to the South Pole by many political and high-profile people are fake? No, I think they're really going there for some reason. It's sinister, maybe. Are they not really going to the pole? No, they're not going to the pole. They're going somewhere else. And what of the supposed military bases and research center? Yeah, there's military bases down there. If it is nearly 60 to 70,000 mile wall that could take a lot to, go to, to guard the whole perimeter. Yes, also true. Multinational Navy, the Antarctic Defense Force. My next thought is that if we are under some kind of dome structure with a fake sun moon device of some kind, what about things such as meteors and asteroids that come from supposedly out in space? Again, not hard to do. Metal ore injected at speed, shallow trajectory, easy. In your video, it talks about flat versus globe being a way to take away the truth or belief in God and then goes on to talk about the creators, plural. Do you believe there is a one God creator or an alien advanced species? Yes. It could be either. We, we, we don't know as far as the builder of this particular place. If some people want to say it's divine, if some, you know, what is the difference between a divine power and an advanced species that is so far above us? You're blurring the lines at that point. So I'm, I'm not going to lean one way or the other in this case. I'd like to think it was divine. Uh, okay, well, I am leaning one way. I'd like to think it was divine. I really do. But if it's just another step into reaching the divine, I'd be perfectly happy with that as well. Are we in something like an aquarium and the creators are some type of giant beings? Eh, maybe. It's what we would do. Like we are we an ant farm of type? Types. Mm, maybe. Maybe. What do flat earth theorists think is outside the dome? Oh, we got all sorts of speculation on what's outside of this thing. I would like to think it's an unlimited dimension because if this place, this world is nothing but conflict and strife and it, it's an inescapable conflict. It doesn't matter how rich or powerful or beautiful or talented that you are. You always have something to complain about. I use the Joe Walsh song called Life's Been Good, The Life of a Rock Star. He's like, life of a rock star is a dream life for a lot of people. You're worshipped on stage. You've got tons of money and you're, uh, people do anything for you. But you always have something to complain about. If this world is inevitably conflicted, then I believe what's outside of here is unlimited. The video stated that the United States and Russia were shooting nukes straight up for several years. Where did they go? Did they detonate? I think they detonated. I think they were trying to paint the sky with high explosives just so they could figure out when they built the space program, well, the fake space program, how far they would have to arc over their rockets. If so, would we be in a so-called nuclear winter and dealing with radiation fallout? No, because they didn't fire enough of them. Look, look up the high altitude nuclear testing schedule and you know, didn't, didn't. Plus, you to remember, a lot of nuclear winter is because of the debris that's kicked up from the ground. If it's up in the air, you're not doing that much. But if you're kicking up, nuclear winter is from a lot of ash and dust that gets into the lower atmosphere and blocks out sunlight. And last for now, what about all the other big theories, such as Nibiru, which many videos are coming out as visual proof of another planet or something near us. Again, people have already heard this about Nibiru. It's just going to be another part of the light show in the sky. And also Admiral Byrd's thoughts was of a hollow earth and did draw a lot of attention to the area because of that theory. Yeah, he did in 1926, but that's where it stopped. He didn't go back to the North Pole ever again after 1926. Look up, you want to look up an interesting theory, look up Charles Lindbergh going to the North Pole and taking pictures. Check check that stuff out. That's really interesting and why the Lindbergh baby may have actually died and why he left the United States, renounced his citizenship and never came back. Thanks. Look forward to your reply, Rick. Hopefully Rick is listening to this. This one is called Black Mirror. And I think I know this one. Hello, been hitting the shows for a year. I never heard you mention the show Black Mirror Season 3 Episode 2 Playtest, where a guy is taken into a game and reality of stopping and starting is hard to see the lines. If you have not gotten into this at all, three seasons on Netflix is great to see. Keep up doing a wonderful job. So glad to hear you do the tinfoil hat show. It was awesome. Over eight years ago, I was a Republican delegate and saw that there was nothing free and fair in the U.S. elections while trying to prove the election was rigged in 2008. I found the YouTube of 9-11 confirming to my mind that steel beams do not glow from jet fuel fire. Good point. Also proving 
that the two different hits on different floors at different angles could not bring the buildings down. Then find the media was lying in the fir first desert storm with the fake CNN reports from Israel while in Burbank, California. Then to find that in religious world, the calendars were all screwed up and Sunday was the Pope's proclaimed day of rest where Saturday remained the chosen day. Along with Christmas was the pagan day of the birth and the sun, not sun, S-U-N, not S-O-N, as they had celebrating for 100 years before yearly for fear the sun would leave. But on December 25th, they realized the days were getting longer and the celebration began. Then while observing the Sabbath and not going anywhere or doing anything, I read the book of Enoch which began the curiosity of is the word or world flat and found you guys online with this already in play so it has already been a wild ride for the past eight years what was real is an illusion and what was called an illusion is real let the truth ring out loud and clear and to answer his first thing great series by the way i watched this a uh, few months before i read this email i was looking for something on, on netflix to have in the background while I'm doing my stuff. And Black Mirror, look up that series. There is not a lot of episodes. It's kind of like a Twilight Zone. What Twilight Zone would have ultimately evolved into, which is every episode is its own thing. It's about an hour long and no commercials. I think they run actually a full hour. And they pack a lot into that hour. And it is really some spooky stuff because it's not talking, it's not horror, not necessarily aliens. It's talking about what we do with technology in the next 20 years. So let's move on. This one's called Your Videos. Hey, I've just watched your video compilation. They are hiding God. Awesome. Thanks. You're so right. And there's even more regarding astrotheology and the biochemical ascension process. I would love to tell you and show you what I know, and you could maybe help me piece it all together, or at least help me blow some whistles. Come say hi. That's from Starchild. Thank you, Starchild. I might actually do that. This one's called Black Marble Bushfires. Oh, yeah, this one I love. It's short. I looked up the black marble photo you talked about in a recent interview and found this news article about bushfires. NASA actually covered their ass. It's, it's at news.com in Australia, technology, uh, NASA's black marble photo of our planet. It, it, they also have this line as an excuse. However, the fires were made to look bigger than they actually were because of the way the image was assembled. Yeah, check out, you think the blue marble shots are bad. Check out the NASA black marble photos and look at Australia because the west side of Australia, there's no population over in the west side of Australia. Now, all, everyone's, most of, almost all the population is on the coastline because it's a desert continent. And in the interior, there's nobody there. And yet the black marble shots from NASA show this massive population center on the west side. And they say, oh, it was bushfires. That's why, why, why they show it lit up. It's like, no, it's because the guy, the NASA artists, the NASA Photoshop guys were lazy and they thought, oh, it's too dark. So let's, let's just, uh, let's lighten it up a bit and put, there's, that was brilliant. I'm, I'm totally calling them that if I run into any NASA guys soon. This one is called Flat Earth question. Hey, Mark, really enjoy the show. I was just curious in your opinion if a flat earth map would change the location of where Amelia Earhart may have disappeared or really any other number of ships or planes over the centuries. For that matter, was Amelia Earhart possibly following an erroneous map? Yes. Yeah, she was because if, especially if she dipped into the Southern Hemisphere, if the scale of the map is wrong, I mean, I, granted, I love the AE map, I love the UN flag, but there's something about the scale that is off and maybe they can't show it to us. Maybe the reason why the UN flag is designed as it is is because they can't show us the real map. I know other people have talked about it, but I'm going to still say it. So if Amelia Earhart was trying to fly around the world and the scale was wrong, that means her fuel depots would have been off. And if she cut it a little close, all of a sudden she thinks, well, this island where my fuel depot is, I should be coming up on it. And if it wasn't, she'd have to ditch. So the question is, where did she ditch? We don't know. We'll have to back in time and figure that one out. I gotta get my time machine ready for that. This one's called Promoting FE. Dear Mark, I assume most Western countries have infomercial television. We could use this particular setup to promote Flat Earth. We could crowdsource Flat Earth products initially to then eventually selling them on the quarter hour or half hour segments. With luck, it may prove to be self-funding, therefore keeping the products higher in the general public's perception. I'm assuming that as money has no smell, there will not be any great antipathy to running the shows. In fact, 
I think you would be a great representative to sell the products on the worldwide distribution video of the show. Thanks, Lynn Mooring. That's interesting. It's very possible. I, I think it's all going to come naturally. I think this thing is already starting to hit critical mass. The way I see it. This one's called Abraham's Travels and the Cardinal Directions Don't Line Up. I'm not the originator of this idea, but I saw a YouTube video of someone not knowing what to make of the directions as they are listed of Abraham traveling around the Middle East in the Bible. They do not match what we are being shown as the current layout of Israel on the map. He noticed if you rotate the map to the left, it matches, but again was only posting this to make the anomaly known and it didn't claim any special reason why you would need to rotate the map to line up to the directions that were given to in Scripture. I pulled up the flat earth map on the UN flag and noticed that the way Israel is sitting on it matches up perfectly with the directions as stated in scripture with him going up out of Egypt and so on. The video is missing from my history now and I can't find it anywhere or I would share the link. If I can find it, I will email back. Maybe the king of the north mentioned the book of revelations is really China if he also had this map in mind when giving directions. That's from Rich. I, maybe? Tough to follow that one, but you know what? I read it anyway. No, no regrets. Don't regret what you've done. Regret what you haven't done. This one's called Flat Earth. Hi, Mark. Well, I'm Ian, just turned 56 years old, and I've just realized that I've been lied to. Unbelievable. All this time, then I watched your video and more. I always felt that what we were taught didn't make sense. Anyway, I have seen things that most people would not believe, but the Flat Earth just makes so much sense. What always got me was were we told space why we were told space is freezing so why is it so hot on earth is it focused heat hmm how can it be so hot on earth but not in space mark everything you say makes sense by the way uh i was in the royal artillery as a gunner as a marksman marksman never did we make any changes to the uh, in our calculations maybe the wind and that was it <laughs> nice there you go artillery shoot he's, he's not taking account the, the Coriolis effect we're just yet another guy there's that guy out of the UK I'm not gonna list his name though this one's called Super Bowl 2017 fix mark off the beaten path but recently the subject of the space station and the Super Bowl jerseys came up you threw out the possibility they may have known the outcome you would never have an easier time convincing me that pro football, at least the Super Bowl, was fake scripted or even holograms until after that game. I should make it clear I did not follow this season. I had no favorite in this game. Eh, me neither, even though I'm kind of a Seattle guy. One, the announcers sounded like pro, West, pro wrestling announcers. From the very beginning, the game felt like the 2009 Super Bowl, where the Cardinals were winning most of the game and the Steelers came back from behind to win. The game played out to completion in a very similar fashion. At one point... They were showing off some technology used to track the players. Specifically, it would allow you to see the game from any angle in a simulation video game style view. Could they have just been lowering the quality of the graphics? How much money would the owners stand to save in some scenario like this? Reminded me of the winners in The Running Man. There were many more subtle nuances. Team named the Patriots. They came from behind and won the first overtime in Super Bowl history. A lot of things about Brady himself sets a lot of flags. And this game happening right after Make America Great Again. Hmm. All of it adds up to way too obvious storybook Hulk Hogan style event. It seemed clearly built to appeal to certain Americans and to inspire some form, form of nationalism. I mean, where are the odds on all these little coincidences? Thanks, Rob. Yeah, unfortunately, professional sports, anytime... You, especially, I, I can only talk to American sports because they, they're easy, there's so many more penalties. So the two biggest sports that you can completely control with officiating, and I, I'm sorry for people that, that watch professional sports. I don't want to take away the magic and the, the wonderfulness of it. I mean, there's great athletes out there and they do some great things, but the officiate, the, the officials run them. Everyone knows, especially in professional football, that you can call holding pretty much every single play of the game. I mean, every single play. The, the, because this is for real money. And so they're going to do whatever it takes to win. And, and especially the, in, the interior linemen, they just hold the hell out of people all day long. And so you can dictate the, the momentum and the, the feel of the game just by calling multiple penalties on people. 
that's very, very extremely easy to do in football because the fans can't see it. There's 20 plus players on the field at any given time. You cannot watch all of them at the same time. A little tougher to do in basketball, in, in United States basketball, because you know, there's 10 guys on the court. But, whenever, but there's a lot of hands, a lot of things happening in a, in a very condensed area. So when someone drives the paint, you could basically call a foul just about any or not call a foul on anybody that's driving down the lane. One, one exception here, and this is not the professional sport. Well, I'm sorry, this is a professional sport, is baseball. Professional baseball is, is tough, really, really tough because all the action is focused on the ball. And the, wherever the ball is, that's where it is. And, and so the only thing is in question is the strike zone. And now that we have a digital strike zone, the ump can't really screw it up that much. And so baseball is about as honest as it can be. With the exception of the performance-enhancing drugs, you know, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens you know, throwing the strikes when he's pushing 40, and so on and so on. You know, the that's tough to that's tough to do. I mean, it's you know, records were screwed up because of the performance enhancing drugs. Oh yeah, and the professional it doesn't really. Oh, it's kind of a moot point. I could go on and on about professional sports. Uh, professional football is in real real trouble right now because uh, performance drugs are so rampant in the sport that that no matter how much padding, no matter how safe the equipment is, there's guys getting hurt badly. And the longer you stay in the game, the the higher the chances you're going to end up like a boxer with brain damage. So parents are starting to pull their kids out of football. It's, it doesn't look good for long-term football stuff. Anyway, I spent way too much time on that question. Sorry, guys. How much time do I got? Another 10 minutes. Let's see how many we knock out here. This one is from Clint. I think he just sent a, he sent a photograph. Yep, let me get rid of that one. Once you go flat, you never go back. This one's called... Flat Earth Video Questions. Hi and good day. I have a few questions if you wouldn't mind. I've watched your entire video. They are hiding God with the greatest lie ever and was really impressed. Not sold, but very impressed. And I've shared it on my Facebook page. My questions. I believe we are to assume that God created the dome. I appreciated your tie into this towards the end of the video detailing how the elite don't want us to believe in him so as to undermine their power over us all. If God created the dome, <clears throat> excuse me, who has been updating it with stars, etc., as our technology advances? We didn't have that type of technology 100 years ago, but people had telescopes and could see. I don't understand how that would have worked. So God created it. Who have been up? Who is? Who we've been? No, no, we haven't been updating anything. No, whoever created this place, they're the ones that have been doing the updates, and they've been doing it for a very, very long time. Remember, we're not the first group to rent this apartment. Who? What civilization was here before us? We've got big gaps in the history. Look at the sunken cities off Japan, the sunken cities off of India. Who really built the pyramids? Was Atlantis real? These are all gaps in our history. So the, with previous versions means that this thing has been worked on for a long time. We, uh, I do believe there is something very important happening in the Antarctic. Otherwise, why no trespassing from our government? Yes, good point. There have been satellite images of a large box-shaped item which can be seen from Google Earth. How does that fit in with the scenario, if at all? It doesn't. Don't trust anything you see on Google Earth, with the exception of your local neighborhood. The rest of it, especially zones which you or nobody goes to, especially Antarctica. It's a bunch of crap. Google Earth works for the system. Regarding CERN, is it your belief that they are trying to usher in the devil in physical form? Hmm, maybe. Maybe. I believe their agenda is evil as the Illuminati is controlling this. I also believe the elite Illuminati Masons and the families are responsible for child trafficking and human sacrifice, likely cannibalism. Uh, very possible. There is much evil in very high places, including our education and judicial, judicial systems. And I would agree with that because power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. Thanks for any information you can provide. And I sincerely appreciate your time. Bonnie. Uh, let's see. How many others can we do here? This one's called Globers in the f f Shooting Community. Mark, thanks for the plate insert on Saturday and reading my email last week. There's a video out for a while about the Coriolis effect and rifle shooting. It is complete crap. I couldn't let it go any longer. Here's a link to the video and a copy of my post. All right, so you guys don't have to necessarily post on this, but he posted on this video about the Coriolis effect. And 
he goes he says something wow he just laid into it okay so he posts dude you are a complete retard first your first target was obviously uphill while your second target was on the desert floor at a thousand yards this elevation distance alone could account for your difference not because of the elevation of the target meaning i know you didn't aim low on purpose but where it appears in your scope all hunters know that you have to adjust your aiming point when shooting uphill or downhill second you stated that you had heavy mirage no one knows no one that knows what they are doing develops initial zero data in the heavy mirage condition. Try getting to the range before noon. Third, the supposed Coriolis effect has been completely debunked. Hurricanes and toilets do not only rotate one way north of the equator and another way in the south. Further, in the 1800s, several tests were performed with cannonballs firing several miles with no effect caused by the orientation of the gun. Rounds fired straight up into the air fell within feet of the cannon, sometimes striking the cannon on the way down. Naval gunners and artillery men do not correct for Coriolis firing up one-ton shells over 20 miles. So why should your puny little bullet going less than a mile have to? But let's do what you did not do, the math. You made an observation about two strings of fire and then a conclusion that it is not the only explanation of your results, yet you state as it as a fact and state that the rotation of the earth caused the difference of 70 feet per second in velocity firing east to west so let's look at the numbers the earth is supposedly a ball 24,000 miles in circumference and travels a little over a thousand miles an hour at the equator judging by your shooting range i'll guess you are somewhere in the southern u.s so let's say you're traveling at 800 miles an hour you are going 42 million feet per second or i'm sorry no 42 million feet per hour or 1173 feet per second oh that's good if your muzzle velocity i didn't hear you state what it was it's 3000 feet per second good for a long distance round i think it's probably close to that by the way your bullet is in the air for one second at a thousand yards and that time the target has traveled towards your eastward fired bullet at 1173 feet and away from your westward fired bullet a like amount so your eastward fired bullet would hit the target somewhere around the one half to two third mark and be way high as it would be in the middle of its arc towards a thousand yard target conversely your westward fired bullet would have to travel 1173 further and would strike the dirt well short of its target north and south fired bullets would deflect so far out of line that no scope could make those kinds of adjustments go back and do some more reading if the Coriolis affects a bullet at all it is so because of the bullet's rotation which causes a variance in air pressure on the bullet depending on the prevailing wind and can lead to changes in elevation we studied this when i was in the service at the ranges we shot 600 yards the effect even in a strong wind was about a half click not really worth bothering with please do yourself a favor and either edit this to give people the correct information or take this down you are embarrassing yourself and the rest of us who take marksmanship seriously and he says final thing to me stay flat amigo greg greg i agree with everything you say there that is that's good stuff Thank you. you. You pretty much said it all. I'm not going to chime in anymore. Uh, five more minutes? Yeah, five more minutes. This one's called Boston Radio. Hey, uh, Sarge, just finished your vid interview on YouTube with Boston Talk Radio. Huge! I've been watching a lot of Apollo hoax vids lately. It's insane to me how in 2017, with all the smart people in the world, and this is just starting to be uncovered, it reminds me of how Trump was written off only to win the election, but that's another discussion. Also similar is how the Patriots were written off in the Super Bowl only to make a stunning comeback. Uh -huh. Anyway, I've been with you in total support for a long time, so enough with the intermediate level stuff. Let's discuss how your work has begun to influence others like myself and what you think this could mean for those responsible for building this place. Do you know of the late Terrence McKenna? Yes, I do. And his time wave zero theory? Yes, I do. In short, he was into drugs like DMT, which is a compound we all have in our bodies and is released upon death. His experiences with the drug led him to discover a code in nature which shows the balance between novelty or chaos and order. While this is a great reading material, his drug use kind of put an asterisk in the doubt column for most people. Now, what I find intriguing is that he found a cor correlation to cycles of chaos throughout history. Points in time where you could argue that something or someone was interacting with us. Is this a push for truth going 
Is this push for truth going to upset the developers of this place? What giant hand will reach down to slap us back into complacency? Mm. Unfortunately, I think you're correct on this one. The powers that be would rather burn this place to the ground than lose control. Agents of the developers, you could say, in a project of this scope and scale, you'd be crazy to not send your people into it like admins or moderators. What happens when this picks up more steam? Steve. Uh, that's the excellent question. I, I, I don't know. It's one of two things. Either we hit a golden age or they try to burn it down. It's one of those two things. I don't think there's any middle ground here. We Our civilization needs to move to the next act. If this is a three-act play, the storyline's got to move forward. We are stuck between act two and act three. We have been smoldering for a while. Someone has not pulled the trigger. Someone's been stalling this, and I don't know exactly why. But hopefully we will find out soon. All right. Will this be the last email? I'm sorry, you guys. I'm, I'm trying to get through these as fast as I can. This one's called, Greetings, Mark. I watched your video about hiding God a year ago and was instantly hooked on Flat Earth. Took me six months of listening before I was confident enough to bring this new revelation to the attention of others. So far, I have converted about 20 people or so from the globe lie. Now, I can't do or watch anything without the FE coming into my mind, from movies to photos and everything in between. So my question is, is there anything you're not really sure on? You're so confident in the things about Flat Earth that you say, and I've always wanted to know if there's anything in Flat Earth related that you're unsure about. Keep up the good work. I've attached the photo of my work badge. I am not going to read his name, but he actually works at a NASA assembly a facility. That's awesome. Uh, and I can't use I can't use it. I'm not going to, you know, tell you what, if you're listening to this uh, and you want me to no, you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to ruin it for him. But I, that's, that's the one I'm going to end on. The fact that this guy is writing me and he's actually working he's, he's showing his id badge from the isn't the nasa assembly facility i'm not going to list one which one it is either awesome no no i pretty much i've i've got all the material down i mean yeah there's a few little fuzzy things but nothing i'm worried about at this point i've been interviewed uh, oh, pretty much 100 times i've done a whole bunch of interviews i talked to a whole bunch of testimony and subject matter experts and the, the convention that's going to come up at the end of this year, we will, that is going to be a critical mass moment for the entire Flat Earth community. It's going to be fantastic, and I, I can't wait to do it. So is there anything that's bothering me right now? Nope. Again, line me up. Put Neil deGrasse Tyson in a whole table full of astrophysicists and astronomers, and I will go solo against them if I have to. Because there's nothing. Because, because they, here's the, here's the difference, and this is what I'll end on. Science, this is why Flat Earth is going to win in the end. And I'm, I'm going to steal this line straight from the Matrix, and you'll know which, which part I'm talking about, because it's from Matrix 1, which is science has to play by the rules because they're the ones that made up the rules. They created the system of laws, you know, the, the, everything defining physics and astrophysics and everything. They have to, they cannot go outside the lines. We can. We can make leaps of faith where they cannot. And because they cannot make leaps of faith, they are stuck. There's only so many questions they can ask. They've like got, they got less than 20 things they can throw at us. And we've got way more than that we can throw at them. And so, again, using the matrix line, they will never be as fast and as strong as we are because they have to f play by the rules. Plain and simple. So with that, guys, thank you for everyone that wrote me in. Everyone wants to write and want me to read the email. Just shoot an email to msargent23 at comcast.net. It's also in the description, so you don't have to write that down or anything. And I will do what I can to read it. But until next time, stay flat.